How's it going everyone, Mickey T here, welcome back to the channel, and welcome to a little bit of a different video. I haven't done many formal reviews on the channel since I did the Joji album review, and I planned to do something soon, but I was struggling to write up some proper formal reviews, so instead I've decided that I'm just gonna do multiple short reviews in one video because there was a surprising amount of noteworthy music that came out in December and is still coming out in January. This is pretty much like Fantano's Why You Know reviews, so if you're familiar with that format then you'll understand what's happening here. Enough waffling from me, let's just get right into it. We're actually going to start off with an album that came out in November, as I've been asked for my opinions on it since I did my King Giz Discog Diaries video, and that of course is KG by King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. KG is essentially a second helping of the material that we saw on the band's 2017 album, Flying Microtonal Banana, which contained elements of microtonal tuning and anatonal rock blending with their psych rock sound. While I think KG is a pretty good album, I do think it's one of the band's weaker records. It isn't as consistently exciting as Flying Microtonal Banana, it isn't really as memorable as Flying Microtonal Banana, and it doesn't really feel as invigorating as Flying Microtonal Banana either. Not to say that it's just a direct copy and paste for King Giz, as some of the tracks on here are pretty creative, like the microtonal folk of Honey, the Turkish house inspired Intrasport, even though I don't really enjoy that song, and the doomy and heavy The Hungry Wolf of Fate, but the rest just seems kind of typical microtonal stuff that we saw them do previously. They have better records for sure, but I don't see this as one of their better ones, unfortunately. I mostly see it as just something that hardcore fans will latch onto, but unfortunately that's not the case for me. Also, we ranked every King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard album on my podcast with a few guests, so if you want to go check that out, please do. Vice Versa and Such Things was an album that I was so excited to listen to, not only because I really liked Avenade's previous album, It's a Whimsical Afterlife, but also because the singles hinted at a more clean, pronounced, and grand sound while also maintaining the abrasive noise and heaviness that I love Avenade's music for. Now the album is out for about a month, and all I can really say is that my expectations were met, and this is Avenade's best album in my opinion. Vice Versa and Such Things sees Avenade improving on the production and the songwriting, the sounds of shoes gaze, alt metal and noise rock and even noise pop come together very well and blend into this really catchy, bittersweet sound with impressive riffs and gorgeous soundscapes. I love a lot of the material on this album like the gorgeous Jay Frusciante, the Vigilante and of course Closure. There's some great bangers on this album like Mr. Whisper, Even So and the title track and, and they all go by relatively smoothly. My main criticisms for the album though is that the tracks can be a tad bit too self-indulgent, and there's a few songs on here that are very derivative. Some songs are derivative of Deftones vocally, and there's one song on here that sounds exactly like a Queens of the Stone Age song, like, like it sounds like it could have fit on their debut or something, but besides that, this is a great noise rock album with dense layers and atmospheres, and it oozes pure passion, and props to Avenade for that. You know, I never thought Blade was that special to begin with, I think he's pretty overrated, but his last two projects were growers. Like, 333 and Exeter were pretty good, and the teasers for this album hinted at Blade going into a more electro-pop and dance-pop direction with producer Mechatalk. But the end result is a boring set of electro-pop cuts that feel very bland in terms of production and vocals. I haven't disliked Blade's vocals this much in ages, but on here they're just at their most vapid, and they make the bland production even more tedious and monotonous than it already was. It isn't awful or unlistenable by any means, but it's just so boring and incredibly disappointing since Blade had a good progression in 2020 and I was actually beginning to enjoy his music a little bit. Taylor Swift is back again with the sister album to Folklore, which is a pretty good outing from Taylor and a good change of pace in her sound. And I think Evermore is better than Folklore in all honesty, while it suffers from the same issues that Folklore did in its length and the sound of the album getting tedious, it has this charm and the characteristics that made that album very enjoyable appear on here. Production wise, this album is really serene, I love Taylor's vocals on the album, the songwriting is quite great and very interesting, her craft as a songwriter is pretty impressive and it has plenty of great highlights to its name, whether that be individual tracks off this thing, and moments of songwriting, and even the guest appearances from the likes of Haim, The National and Bon Iver once again. Yeah, I don't have much else to say besides that. Yeah, 
You know, I think it's a pretty decent outing from Cuddy, but I have some issues with it. The Travis Scott influences are too heavy in my opinion. I don't think he puts much of a spin on things, and it's way too long for my liking. The production is good, the emotions and the heart is there from Cuddy, and in general I have more positives to say, but ultimately it wasn't that crazy of a record for me, I thought it was alright. I don't see what people are seeing in this new Avalanches album in all honesty, to me it's just a vapid, monotonous and boring set of glorified interludes. It may have some tracks that I like, but ultimately I don't care for anything off of this. Japanese sludge and drone metal band Boris collaborate once more with Japanese noise producer Merzbau on this new LP, and going into it, I was expecting just the noisiest bit of sludge metal ever, but we got something completely different. We get this indulgent piece of post-metal and noise that coincides in such a great way. Granted, not everything on here is great, and some tracks are a little patience testing, but the atmospheres sound really great. The way the noise looms in the background is great to me, and Boris gave it their all with some pretty atmospheres and pretty shoegazy and post-metal dynamics. It made for one of the best noise and metal releases of the year, and I'm here for it. Oh shit. So after two years, the album that everybody in trap music is hyping up is out, and that is Playboy Carty's whole lot of red. Safe to say that this is one of the most polarizing albums in recent memory. It's certainly one of the most polarizing album responses I've ever seen. Yeah, Karaji didn't make another dial it on here, but instead he decided to make this out there, dark, abrasive record with some punk flair to it and these abrasive trap beats as well as some very wild and out there inflections from him that come off a little bit uncomfortable at times, I'll admit. But overall, I really like this album. I feel like people who are calling this trash are just on the bandwagon because they listened to it once. It isn't perfect, however. It's bloated. It has some grating cuts, particularly in the first half. But besides that, there's some really great bangers on here. There's some traditional dialit esque sounds on here. I really like how bold Carty is with his vocals and the production. We have a good Kanye verse. And there's some stuff that feels out of Carty's element, like Vamp Anthem. And I respect the hell out of him for not making another dialit and trying to challenge himself artistically. So yeah, I think this is good. I actually really like Whole Lot Red. It's not my favorite Playboy Carty album. I think self titled and dialit are still better, but it's a good album. It's a good album. I really liked Lil Darky's debut, This Does Not Exist, but following the disappointing yin, Swamp diminishes any excitement I had for Lil Darky since This Does Not Exist. Although it has some songs that I like, there's just too many things about Swamp that take away any enjoyment I could have had of the full product. The production is varied, I'll give him that, but it's consistently bland, poorly mixed, and monotonous. There's too many lackluster tracks and ideas that barely stick with me, the features are practically comatose and consistently forced yet boring lyrics come off very corny and lack any form of subtlety. Plus, this didn't need to be over an hour long, let alone have 22 tracks, as it drags and drags and drags and it gets stale by track 14. Not to mention, the trap metal tracks are fucking awful. I'm convinced at this stage that Eminem has completely lost his fucking mind since Encore, and I think I've lost my mind too since I don't hate Side B of music to be murdered by. It still suffers from Eminemisms like mostly bland production, relationship tracks, corny skits, terrible hooks, and of course Marshall, Corny Man, Mathers, completely fucking stupid bars and one-liners. I feel like on this album they're way more forgivable, as it's clear that Eminem just doesn't care and he isn't taking himself that seriously, which creates a vibe that I have way more fun listening to and I feel like it's easier to sit through than most of Eminem's material post the Eminem show. Like on previous Eminem albums, he makes it clear that he's taking himself seriously, yet he still makes these stupid fucking lines. Cough, cough, recovery and revival, cough, cough. The tracks that I like the most were pretty great, they were well produced, Eminem delivered some decent flows, character, and I actually had a laugh at some of the corny lines he's spitting on some of these tracks. There were some really dumb and tedious tracks like Tone Deaf, Book of Rhymes, Nat and Higher, but the highs in this album are great, some of which give off a kind of relapse vibe in terms of production. Yeah, it's not good by any means, but at least it's not terrible. It's pretty much better than half of Eminem's discography, I would say. I think it's better than the original music to be murdered by, honestly.
Yeah, I don't get the hype for this album from Viagra Boys. Despite having some excellent moments, Welfare Jazz doesn't really strike me as having much in the way of anything interesting or standout. Many of the ideas that the band explore on here aren't fleshed out to their full potential, and much of the instrumentation meanders way too much for my liking. I'm not too keen on the vocals either, since they just come off like a gimmick with the country twang, and most of the songwriting isn't very interesting to me. Maybe I chose the wrong Viagra Boys album to start with, but this just isn't doing much for me personally. Rap Ferreira's newest album here comes not even a year after his great Purple Moonlight Pages album, which was a fantastic abstract hip-hop and jazz rap record, but unfortunately Bob's Son isn't the best follow-up to it. It has some tracks that I really like, and Rap Ferreira is still pretty sharp and weird, but the production isn't the best, especially on the vocal front, as the mixing is a little bit off on Milo's vocals, as he sounds way quieter than I think he should be, and some of the instrumentals aren't all that great to me. There's some complete duds in the track list, but besides that, I really enjoyed some of the tracks from this thing. He hasn't lost much of his touch on some of these songs, but as a whole, it is a little forgettable and a little disappointing. Although it's not overly consistent, Fax Gang's debut album, Aethernet, is a good improvement over FXG3000. The experimental, noisy, and atmospheric sound of this album coincides well with the heavily processed vocals, and there were plenty of moments that left me in awe. Sadly, not everything on Aethernet is amazing. It has some duds, and the overall sound palette isn't that impressive, but it's good nonetheless. No. Yeah, this new Fireman EP is fire. Overcoming the Cycle of Sun Collapse is a short but sweet punk-tinged post-hardcore EP that delivers on being an engaging listen while also not trying to overcomplicate things for the listener. It's just a fun and exhilarating release, and I couldn't have asked for anything better besides that. What stood out to me the most was the guitar work, which was incredibly solid throughout the project. The riffs on this album are incredibly energetic, they ooze passion, and they're extremely catchy, not to mention every other bit of instrumentation on this sounds fantastic too, and they complement what Fire Fireman is doing on here well. Vocally and lyrically, Fireman is great as well. His vocals are rough in the mix, yet they have this exuberance and passion to them that you can't help but take notice of, especially since they make these songs all the more catchy. That's only amplified further by the smart songwriting, which features some clever commentary. While I love a lot of things about this EP, it does have one major issue. I'm personally not a fan of the final track, Unscrew. I like the hook and the guitar work, but I'm not too keen in its pacing, but that's really it. I don't have any other complaints. I think this is just a pretty good EP from Fireman that I'm and I recommend that you give this one a shot. Finally, we are covering The Dirty Nil with Fuck Art. What a fucking edgy title. While Fuck Art isn't a bad album, it doesn't really do much to stand out in a sea of already trite and bland pop punk albums. Vocally, you know, it's fine. The instrumentals are fine. The track list is mediocre. And it has some corny lyrics, but that's really it. I don't have much to say after that. It's just pretty meh. And that is gonna conclude today's video. Thank you so much for watching. What were your favorite releases of December and January? Be sure to check out my podcast. Be sure to check out my Rate Your Music and Album of the Year. If you like the video, please leave a like. If you're interested in more content, please consider subscribing. And with that being said, my name has been Mickey T, and thanks for watching.